Hello and welcome to another update video about ETH. Interesting day today. By the way, I'm going to do a CPI live stream today. Um, we start half an hour before the CPI data release. You can find the link to the live stream in the or on the YouTube channel. So just check out our live stream section there. It's already it's already on there, so you can already uh, put that onto your <laughs> put put your alarm clock on. Um, then. Obviously, we have been talking in the last few videos about this five-wave move to the upside. And by the way, due to CPI, probably today, you know, we might see a few distortions. You, you see some sometimes you see really crazy volatility. I mean, I don't know, but I've got the feeling this time we might see some decent volatility. The last few times, I didn't really bother. Yeah, I didn't really care about CPI too much. You, you know, I don't think we did a live stream. Maybe we did a live stream, but we didn't really care too much about it because we didn't really expect much volatility and we didn't see much volatility. But it feels like volatility is starting again, right? We see proper structures. We, As you can see here, we had a nice five-wave move up. We're coming down in a nice three-wave move. The market seems to get a little bit more interesting again, you know, and I think something is brewing there. I don't know what, but something, it just indicates that some volatility is 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 coming back, obviously, after we had so many weeks and months, actually, of boring price action. I mean, I'm not saying the boring price action is going to stop, but at least at the moment, it feels like a little bit different, um, even though not too much is happening, but... At least we can recognize some five wave moves, which is always important. So, you know, I'm just saying prepare for some distortions, prepare for the waves to go into their extremes, prepare for maybe some invalidations. That's what happens on a day like that. You cannot, you cannot say that, oh, okay, CPI is going to do this, so the market is going to do that. It's not going to work like that because there's going to be some unpredictable short-term volatility and we also don't know what CPI is going to do. I mean, there are forecasts, but what I can tell you is if the forecast is met, it's typically not doing much. But if there are you know, deviations from the forecast and current forecast is, yeah, quite, you know, shows quite a high increase in, um, in inflation, you know, um, at least to what uh, previous months did. So <clears throat> I think we just have to be prepared for potential volatility. And if it's lower than the forecast, as always, it could be bullish for the crypto market. Now, we are coming closer to that support level. I highlighted to you in yesterday's video that we might get there, um, but that ideally 1551 is holding to give us a C wave to the upside. Now, now, on a day like that, you have to take that with a pinch of salt. It might be that we don't exactly reach the support area. Maybe we overshoot it a little bit. And the main problem is that this is a B wave. So B waves can overshoot. There's no way of, of predicting or forecasting that. However, we take a look at some more targets here in, in this video. Okay. Um, yeah, let's take a look at some, some targets. Best I can tell. And, and this is a microstructure count that you anyway need to take with a pinch of salt because we're dealing here with uh, a corrective structure so they always change they always morph but best i can tell obviously as i said yesterday we have a five wave move up so it suggests continuation higher at least in the c wave so we're currently watching if we can get a c wave ideally i don't want price to go below 1551 if it does then 1530 should really be the limit now, in some circumstances, B waves can overshoot, but if the A wave was a five wave move, they don't tend to do that. So just be aware, also be aware that here, um, this could be it. I mean, okay, maybe a little lower, but the Y wave did go below the low of the wave W. That's what we want to see. So it doesn't necessarily need to go any lower, but this is a WXY combination pattern. So we can use a couple of ways to calculate targets. Bear in mind, we're just looking at the microstructures here at the moment, so they can change quickly. But um, I mean, the one to one ratio, I mean, the 61.8 extension is already reached. That's the very first target that you normally are watching. OK, that's typically a very short target, but I cannot rule out it's finished. If I, you know, if I if I always if I get asked what I prefer, I typically prefer the one to one ratio. It's a bit more reliable. 100 percent extension. That is that's at 1572. In a more extreme case, 1552 is also a key target. That is pretty much all within the box here. So we've got one way of calculating targets by looking at the Fibonacci extensions, which is this, which is sometimes more accurate. 
and the retracements and then if you overlay them yeah if you see any overlaps that can give you an, an additional indication where it might land but anyway somewhere in here it should land ideally now we're very close already but yeah ideally it goes a little lower ideally i prefer it a little a little bit lower and then if i add even another step of sub waves but again you can't take them for granted because always see that people try to trade the waves. You don't trade the waves, you trade the pivot points. You trade the invalidation points, yeah? You trade just before they get invalidated, ideally. Because they are key levels, and the closer you get to an invalidation point, the the less the less or the better the reward to risk ratio. We explain all of that in the membership, but again, that all depends on your personal style and strategy, right? I can't give you there any specific advice because some people are breakout traders, some people are pullback traders. But what's interesting as well that we might be able to define now with the latest spike, a bit of a trend line here. Now that's also not very well defined because I only have two touch points, but it might be moving here in a descending wedge. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure how accurate that is because we typically want three touch points somewhere to have a valid trend line, but I see that might be something interesting. But bigger picture wise, nothing changed. So we currently still see that as part of a larger B wave which should sell off afterwards. Um, by the way, looking at the proportions, I don't necessarily think it will be, it is still this B wave. I think we are probably in the wave two. As I said yesterday, there are two wave counts. Um, let's change it now because I think if a C wave happens, if a C wave happens, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's align it with a Bitcoin count. I said, it, I said yesterday to you, depending on what happens, we might change it to this. So we had a five wave move down, in fact, complete. And that this is now the wave two retracement. And then like Bitcoin, this is sort of an ABC structure. And then resistance, let's add resistance to the chart as well. So basically all I'm doing here, and that's important, I'm just aligning it with the Bitcoin wave count, which makes sense if I look at the proportions. Especially on a day like that, we want to be prepared. Resistance is all the way up to 1700. That means if we get three waves up as forecasted here in an ABC structure, then this could set up the price for the final downturn in a third wave. Um, and that should be a decent crash. Uh, if it gives us five waves above resistance, so five waves, one, two, three. So until here, you don't see a difference between the ABC and the one to three. But if it gives us a four and a five, and it also goes above the August high, then we have a first reliable signal that a lasting low might have been established. And then the ABC pullback will tell us the truth and could also act as a trade setup for higher. That's sort of how I see the market at the moment. I hope you like the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And yeah, make sure that you check in to the live stream later. And also, if you're interested in the channel membership as a member, um, you can find all the links in the description leading to the membership. Every Sunday, you get a weekly live stream at 5 p.m. UTC. You get access to Discord and Telegram, to the live chat rooms, to educational material, lots of Elliott Wave cheat sheets. As a gold member, you get additional market updates. As silver and gold members, you get access to the chat rooms, yeah. And uh, as I said, a lot of educational material. So check it out. Hope to see you there. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.